Time for another board game review, and this time we have the game Exit the Game, The Pharaoh's Tomb. This was sent to me by Thames and Cosmos, and is designed by Inca and Marcus Brand. Now I will say that there are no spoilers in this video. I might mention a few puzzles very vaguely, but the whole point of this game is that it is a one-time experience. You basically, uh, it's an escape room type of game, and you can basically only play it once. Keep that in mind, uh, and I'm just gonna show you how the system sort of works for the exit games, um, as well as my thoughts on it as a whole. You are traveling with a tour group in Egypt. Your visit to the Valley of the Kings is the highlight of your vacation. You find the tomb of Tutankhamun? I forget how to say that. Especially spellbinding. Inside, you notice that you have lost the rest of the group. As you wander through the passageways, your fascination gradually turns to panic. Suddenly, you find yourselves in a mysterious burial chamber, and you hear a frightening sound. The stone door closes behind you, blocking your escape. As you look around, you discover a dust-covered notebook and an ancient disc. The entire tomb seems to be covered with riddles. You will only be able to escape if you manage to solve all the riddles in time. If not, you'll be buried under stone forever. Let me show you some of the components of the game. So when you open the box, this is what you can see inside. You see this decoder disc, you see this old notebook, uh, notes of Dr. Ford, these strange strips, which we don't know the meaning of at the beginning of the game, um, an answer card pile, a riddle card pile, uh, a, a couple help cards. Uh, these are if you need help with a specific puzzle. In addition, you'll need something to write with, probably pencils, an eraser, or a pen. Uh, sheets of paper are very useful, uh, and also a watch, or you can use your iPhone or something uh, to keep track of the time. Uh, scissors uh, can be helpful as well. Uh, I would recommend a pair of scissors as well. Now the game has no board. All you have to work with is this book and this decoder disc. Um, as the game continues, you will slowly add riddle cards from this deck, uh, which will be found in illustrations or referred to in the text. Whenever this happens, you pick the card from the pile and look at them, but only when you're told to. And I'm not going to go through these because these have all the puzzles. Again, this is a one-time experience, so I don't want to spoil anything. Likewise, these strange items in the box, you don't use these until you, are, uh, you have found them. So you leave them in the box because technically you don't have these yet. An illustration might look like this. You'll see the actual card in the picture and that means you immediately pull out that card uh, and look at it. Now your goal is to escape together from the burial chamber as quickly as possible, but that would be easier if not for the fact that every lock in the room is secured with a riddle. Um, so during the course of the game, you'll keep finding objects that are locked with a code consisting of three hieroglyphs. To uh, access them, you have to figure out the matching code and enter it on your decoder disc. So you'll find there's 10 different symbols along the edge of this decoder disc. Um, those all represent different uh, puzzles or a code that needs to be cracked. But you have to figure out for yourselves which symbol belongs to which code. If you think you can crack a code, uh, you enter it. So let's say I have this uh, hexagon one, and I think the code is, I don't know, fish, sphinx, uh, wings. I don't know if that that's not the answer. I'm randomly doing this, but it would say to look at card number 12 in the answer card in the answer card pile and you would pull and it would tell you if you are on the right track or not. These code symbols will be in the pictures in the book or on the card. So anything that's a locked object, they show you an example of this uh, mummy here. Uh, this code, this symbol is on this. That means it's the lock uh, for this specific uh, sarcophagus. All codes can be solved logically. Don't just try all possible combinations. That is entirely against the spirit of the game. And it would take too much time anyway, because there's a time limit as well. Um, so yeah, that's basically how the game works, is you solve puzzles uh, and use this system, which I think is very clever, to see if you got the right answer and can progress. Now, if you're stuck over here, you have these clues. And let's say, for example, we were stuck on the hexagon clue. We could look at the first clue, and they have a second clue, and then finally it has a solution for you if you really don't know. Of course, the game encourages you to try to not use the riddle or the, the help cards if possible. Um, sometimes you won't have all the information right away. Every puzzle in the game can be solved logically. And what's important to note is that you can write on, fold, or tear the materials. You're only playing this game once, so go at it. Sometimes it's really helpful to cut things up or write on things um, in order to solve the puzzle. Now, the game ends when you've solved the last riddle and escaped from the burial chamber, and a card will tell you that. Uh, so you start a stopwatch at the beginning of the game so you know how long you needed because at the end of the game there's a table to see how well you did. Uh, and it's, it tracks it by 
uh, how much time you took, as well as how many help cards you use. So if you want a perfect rating, no help cards under an hour. Otherwise, that's it. I can't show you much more. That's just how it works. You got your book, you've got your riddles, and you just go through and try to solve it. That's the system. Uh, let me tell you what I thought about it. If you've never played an escape room game, the exit games are brilliant. Uh, this is basically going to serve as probably a review for all exit games because they're all the same system and I can't show you the puzzles. So there's not much I can tell you outside of how they work. Um, but they have ingenious puzzles. Some of them are so out of the box, they'll have your jaw on the floor. I played the Abandoned Cabin uh, before this one, which was also very good, and Pharaoh's Tomb doesn't disappoint. It's a bit harder. Uh, I think it's like the 4 out of 5 on the difficulty scale, um, but it's really, really good. The decoder disc and answer card system is a really neat way of seeing if you've solved the puzzle without spoiling the answer if you're wrong. It's I think it's super clever. Um, the game is tense and so much fun. It really does make you feel like you're in an escape room. If you've been in an escape room, it gives you that same exact energy. Um, you want to get the best score possible, and if you're like me, uh, you try your best to never use the clue cards. In this particular game, we didn't, uh, and we were pretty proud of that. I do think these games are best played with two people. They'd also be a really good solo experience if you're totally on point, but I actually enjoy the collaborative effort when you have another person uh, also brainstorming. But I don't think I would enjoy it beyond two, though, because unlike a real escape room where there's a wide space of puzzles to solve simultaneously in real time, in Exit you unlock puzzles as you go, and usually you're only figuring out like two puzzles at a time. If you're really quick with puzzles like me and Anne-Marie, my wife, uh, usually there's just one puzzle you're focusing on. That's where it can get tricky because two people want to look at the same diagram or card. There's a lot of passing and turning pages where I think if you had more than two people, someone's inevitably going to get left out, especially if you're trying to beat the time and it's a tense situation. Um, so I think one to two is best. Two, I think, is perfect, especially if the other person really likes puzzles and escape rooms and that tension. Um, but I think it, it would also work solo as well, just be a bit harder. Um, the puzzles range from simple to absolute mind benders. There's one puzzle in the game that had us go, holy shit, when we finally understood the meaning behind it. This is where Exit the game truly shines. There's always one or two puzzles that are so insanely clever and creative with the concept of what a board game is that they'll blow your mind. One critique is there's a puzzle in the game where I felt that the printing of a particular component was too light. And I understand why it was that way, I won't say why, uh, but I think if someone had bad vision or maybe was colorblind, they'd have a really difficult time with it. I also think there's a couple of instances where the wording of the clues are maybe a little too cryptic. Uh, I know that's the point of the game, but it was almost like counterintuitive. And like, even though we understood the the clue, it was still too cryptic. But that's of course, you know, where the help cards come in. And we, you know, it's on us for refusing to use them. Um, to the game's credit, we did eventually solve those puzzles on their own. We just took more time than we would have liked. And it, it didn't feel like, oh, we just didn't figure it out. It just felt like it was a little too confusing, even though it wasn't that hard of a puzzle. Um, one of them was the one I mentioned with the text that was hard to see, and the other one was one that we just kind of overthought, I guess. Um, the Egyptian theme of this uh, box is really fun. I think they do some really clever things with the particular setting. It makes this installment feel very unique and fun, uh, and very thematic. Uh, so let's talk about the price. Uh, is it worth buying a game that you can effectively only play once. Right now, last I checked, this game goes for about 10 bucks on Amazon, and for that price, I'd say definitely worth it. Easy. We spent about an hour and 45 minutes with the game, because we didn't use any clues, and since that's, what, five dollars per person, I would say that's perfectly fair. I would pay five dollars to do a really fun escape room, and quite frankly, two of the puzzles in this game are so clever and jaw-dropping that I think they're worth the price of admission alone, but $10 for this is a steal. If you've been interested in the concept of an escape room board game, uh, the Exit games are a great place to start. This one's on the harder side, and it's labeled as a 4 out of 5 difficulty, so you maybe you'd want to start with a lower one, but if you're like confident, like, yeah, we can do it. I've done Escape Rooms, I've done this kind of thing before. You can jump right in. Uh, the theme is great, the design is phenomenal. Uh, we scored 8 stars in our final score. Our final time was an hour and 44 minutes. Uh, so if you do get the game, see if you can beat us. We didn't use any clue cards, um, but we were a little bit over time. Uh, but man, really, really loved the game, and I would highly recommend it.
it, all the exit games I've played, well, all the two I've played, uh, are fantastic, and I am, I'm sure the other ones are great too.